you know, we started using Instat, I think halfway through last season. So we decided to make a full commitment this year to using it. I mean, it has taken our scouting and our player development to a whole new level. I mean, especially with player development, that's the big buzzword now. Every player is asking about every transfer, every recruit. They're saying, okay, how are you going to get me better? So what we've done with our guys is we focus a lot on just their shot charts. So this is just Derek Culver, who's a player for us. And we'll show him his own shot chart from preseason, midseason, and postseason. And then we go over them and say, go over them with them and say, like, okay, where do you think you're good at? Where do you think you're bad at? Where do you think you can improve upon? And what do we expect from you? Because a lot of these players, they don't know what the coaches expect from them. And so obviously our biggest expectation is that this number has to improve. And it did last year. I mean, we looked at it from last year, just a second ago, and it was about 39% and it's up to 43%. Now, is that where we would necessarily want it to be? No, we still want it to be higher, but it's still, you could show him that there's a gradual improvement there and then you can break it down even further with Instat. And uh, one place that we also wanted him to improve was his outside shooting. Not so much this area, but more of in here. Okay, and so he shot well on the right side, didn't shoot as well on the left side. So we probably have to look at that, which is kind of confusing because Derek is left-handed. Um, so maybe that's he's fading away too much. Maybe he's off balance, whatever. Um, so this is the way that if we just were sitting down with Derek right now, we could just click here. And then we could either watch the clips in this view, or I usually go to the external view just because it's a little easier to manage. Um, give a second to load. And then we could watch all of his makes and uh, attempts on the year from that area of the floor. And so with that, we can do a number of different things where we could highlight things, slow it down, extend the clip if we want. Um, and then we'll just break it down with them. Like, okay, so on this particular shot, you know, we felt that you were probably fading away there. If you had taken a step in there instead, you probably would have got a better shot, better angle. I don't think that's a shot blocker. No, he shouldn't play away from someone like that. Yeah, the guy's physical, but you can go to the basket and finish around that. And those are just little things that we can show him. So that way it's not just, you know, practicing things on the court that a player might never use. They might be able to utilize this in the game or show them, okay, if you've just taken this step a step or whatever, you can get to the basket and score a lot easier. Um, and then, so we do that with all of our guys um, three times a year. And our coaching staff will sit down and look at it. And we also look at our own overall shot chart. Sorry, all these little tabs are in the way of where I want to click. We'll look at our overall, that's over here overall shot chart and see where are we getting our shots from. And so obviously we probably could shoot more in the corner. We don't take a lot of corner threes, but I think that's just more of our offense. We do shoot a lot around the basket, which is, you know, typically our offense where we're trying to get to the basket. We throw into the post quite a bit. Um, we probably could use more kickouts from three, but that's a, that's a different story. And then we could easily look at you know, if we want to look at all of our bigs, we can look at, where are they? Derek, Gabe, Isaiah, before he got injured, and Sunny. And we can see all of our big shots very easily and where they've been shooting, how they've been shooting. And if we want to isolate them more, obviously we can click less players. And we can really break it down with, okay, is it on a post up? Is it on a uh, catch and shoes, which Derek shouldn't have too many. Yeah, he doesn't. And then we can literally just break down with these guys. And then when we show them the film, go into the court and practice certain things that they want to shoot or improve upon or what have you, or what we expect them to improve upon. Like I know we told Gabe that we wanted him to make this type of shot more. Clearly, you know, we needed, we missed something there and he didn't probably working on it enough or we didn't drill it enough. So this is something that we need to address with him going into this next season, just so we're, he's prepared to make that type of shot for us. Um, with it also is we will, here we go. We will tag a lot of our guys' shots. So what I've done here is, um, if I just look at Derek's shot chart again, it just has this whole entire 
circle here, which is with both left and right side. So what I wanted to do was look at his left side makes versus misses, his right side makes versus misses. So this is going back to last year. So if I look at his left side misses, he had, it shows, he had 90 misses versus versus 90 makes. Great. So that's that's perfect. 50%. That's not too bad. But if I look at his right misses, and that's brutal. 65 versus there's no way it's 50 and 50, but that's fine. So, I mean, we could look at each one. And what I've done with these tagging is, so say I click here. Sorry, my internet's really slow. It's West Virginia Wi-Fi. But, so what you can do is, when you tag, come on. So you can watch the clip, and what I do is just left and right miss, uh, makes and misses. You watch the shot, and then once he misses it, I'll just simply click tag. That was a left side miss, and then it was Derek's miss. So I'm not going to click it now because I've already tagged this one, so I don't want to double tag. But then you can create any tag you want. So I can put down here that the reason why he probably missed was his fadeaway. So tag, new tag, fading. Uh, I could put that as a negative. Fading miss probably would be better. And then you could change the duration of how how long you want it in the hotkeys. No, so like you were saying, uh, you were talking about duration. I mean, yeah, I think yep. that helps big time with our uh, our staff and our players because nobody wants to sit there and watch a 20, 30 second clip, which sometimes when you're on synergy, you can get those long clips. And I mean, it saves me time from having to go in and manually shorten each clip because before when I was doing scouts and player edits I'd have to go in there and shrink every I think for every player highlight that I had to 10 seconds and when you got 10 guys and anywhere from three to four clips per and then you do that for 15 20 scouts it it, it takes up a lot of time that you just mm -hmm. don't necessarily want to have to do that with but if I go in here and just tag everybody and you can change the duration then it's automatically it's what I want already so I don't have to worry about shortening clips. A lot of times these clips aren't as long as the Synergy clips anyway. So it just saves me a ton of time that I can actually spend on, you know, scouting and looking at players and trying to figure out what they actually run. Because that's where my longer clips are going to be is when they actually are running sets, when they're actually running out-of-bounds plays, press breakers, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yeah, time, time is uh, time is king for sure. You know, there's never enough of it for coaches, and any way you can kind of make that more efficient, I think, you know, it's a it's a no brainer. Absolutely, especially with Absolutely. I mean, players nowadays they just don't have the attention span mm -hmm. to just sit there and watch film for not even like hours. Just 20, 30 minutes can be long for these guys. I mean, we we all sure. know we've all sat and watched film and. You know, you have them for the first seven, eight clips, and then all of a sudden, unless they're watching themselves, because they always have all the time in the world to watch themselves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only if they're playing well. If they're not playing well, they don't have any time in the world to watch them. But uh, For sure. But I mean, so just a quick overview on what I do with scouting for this. Um, yeah, jump right in. Basically, I'll go to, first I go to their team. Obviously, I don't go straight to their players. And then the first thing I do is play types. You know, what do they run? This one I actually keep on average per game, but what do they want run per game and what are they most efficient at? So someone like Oak State, they run a ton of transition, which we knew because, you know, they have their different transitions. Plus they run catch and shoots, which probably are also coming out of transitions because they run certain uh, primary transition offenses. And then what are they most efficient at? So they're obviously most efficient at pick and rolls uh, with the roller getting the ball and putbacks. I would assume that's because Cade Cunningham is coming off the – pick and roll, and he's going to take a lot more attention leaving the big man open, uh, which allows someone like Caleb Boone and Mal uh, Matthew Alexander Moncrief to get easy shots at the rim. So if I had clicked, say this, I could see his clips. 
relatively easily as long as my Wi-Fi is good. <laughs> and now I get all the clips I want of just pick and rolls with them hitting the roll man. And that, and that happened a lot this year where he just rolls hard to the rim. And then I could choose particular games. So when we, we played these guys three times, we played, them tw- we played everybody twice in the regular season, and then we hit them up in the tournament. And so I can go back and look at, okay, how did he score? Get, or let's see his pick and rolls against us. And what did we do wrong in this coverage? Our help guy didn't help, and our big probably didn't do anything because he was just standing in no man's land, which it happens, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so that's a quick thing that I can do with just their play types, figure out what they're most efficient at. So what do we need to look to stop? What do we need to uh, look to focus on? Because obviously they run a ton of transition, a ton of catch and shoot. And then so I look at who's shooting the most on their team. So they average – Bryce Williams has two and a half shots per Rondell Walker, two and one. On one and fair and flavors, which they're sheer 1.4. So I would have thought it'd be a little higher for him. But then I can also look at okay, someone like Isaac likely is not going to catch and shoot, which we already knew. But this is just going to help cement that this gives right. me a, an overall picture of what this team's going to do, who's going to do what. And then I can go into the more in depth stuff about certain players. Um, we're not a big lineup school. I like looking at lineups, but that's more so for me to get an idea of. You know, how's their starting lineup doing? What are their subs looking at? When, when is the the time that we should probably be making our runs? Um, so, obviously, their starting lineup's a plus 10, which makes sense. But if you look at their next lineup, which is just one player difference, Ronda Walker for Isaac Likely, they're a minus 20 in about the same amount of minutes. So, right then and there, I should know that as soon as they make that sub for Likely, we should be able to make a run against them. Now that's just something more so for me when I'm watching game or when I'm watching the actual game. Maybe we should be isolating him. Maybe we should look at these minutes and figure out, you know, why they're minus twenty. I think. And, and having the ability to, to to watch player minutes within stat, I think, is, is another key difference maker. At least for, for our from our standpoint, you know, you can go right in and watch individual player minutes, or, or in this case, individual lineup minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, especially with the transfer portal, we have been huge on minutes of players because, you know, I will go watch their makes and go watch their their defensive clips per se, but that's only what's what they're involved in. So you don't get to see, you know, maybe they score 20 a game, but they're just that dude who just stands in the corner on offense and doesn't really help much on defense. But you're not going to get that because he's not going to be necessarily active. Uh, and so it won't get clipped on synergy. But here I can go, so say Cade Cunningham is transferring. He's not transferring. He's going to the NBA, obviously. Um, but I can click on him and watch his minutes for, I think that's average minutes. So if I go total, I can watch all of his minutes for whatever game I have clicked. But anyways, I'll, go, I'll just go straight to him. Actually, I have him open. So if I want to watch a particular game of a player, say his best game... Probably not. I won't, it's I won't watch be that 40-piece on Oklahoma, huh? <laughs> as, as long as it's not that 40-piece on West Virginia. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so I could watch his minutes versus us. How did he do? What did we do? What did our defense look like against him? These are his shots against us that I can watch. Um, and there's just different things I could watch strictly of him. And then I think – let me see if I click this. If it'll work. I know I can click over here. And it gives me different options. I can watch his full game. I can only watch his game time, which cuts out. I think that cuts out commercials, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And then I can watch Cade's actual stuff, his player offensive possessions, his defensive possessions, his game time. So I, I can do this with my own guys, and it saves someone like Ryan, our video coordinator, time from cutting up minutes, cutting up the game completely. We'll still do that just as a backup because you never know, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes you want something quick. But, I mean, this is just an easy way for – you know, even to send it to our guys to watch their minutes because, again, players love watching their minutes. They don't love watching everybody else's minutes. And if the right. guy only plays, you know, say it's a freshman and he only plays, you know, 10, 15 minutes a game and it's eight, nine minutes in the first half, like near the end and four or five minutes in the second half at the beginning, he doesn't want to have to scroll through the entire game 
and look for when he gets in finally. He could just click it and find his own minutes and, and watch how he's doing, watch how he's playing and see what he needs to improve on. And it's an easy way for our coaches to watch that as well. Um, but going back to scouting, next thing we'll do is we'll look at shot charts. So where do they get their shots from? This is on Kate Cunningham, but we'll do it for the whole team. Where do they get their shots from? You know, is there anything that we need to – that's out of the ordinary? So, like, I'm sure if we looked at Alabama's, they won't have next to anything in here. All right. Because they're a big uh, three and layup team, which is technically analytically sound. Um, so then that just gives us an idea of where they're shooting, how they're getting their shots. Uh, there's plenty of different um, settings that you could choose. So if I want to just look at their catch and shoot shots – Okay, so K doesn't really catch and shoot the ball very much, which makes sense because he's probably going to be the primary ball handler. So if I was looking at a pick and roll ball handler, there you go. There's all of his shots. So he's technically a pick and roll handler, and you can get all of that information by just clicking on play types for a player and seeing, you know, which which percentage of plays that he run the most. Pick and roll ball handler, which makes sense. But what is he most efficient at? Pick and pops, which is kind of surprising. I didn't know he was a good that good of a pick and pop player, but he only runs it 1.4% of the time, which is probably why that percentage is so high. And it breaks down jumpers, layups, and floors. I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, and then it also shows you your skills, and you can watch different types of skills, defensive rebounding, him defending drives, and it gives you an idea of what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. So, like, he's not a good pick and roll roller which makes sense. I don't know why you would really put him in a pick and roll as the roller situation because they'd probably just switch. Or, you know, if, if it's likely coming off, you're probably going to just double team Cade because likely doesn't necessarily make that far uh, shot, the outside jump shot. Um, and this just gives you an idea of these players. So what we typically will do is we watch their last 30 makes just to get an idea of, you know, who they are as a player. What do they do? And I could easily tag things in there. Um, I didn't do that this year just because I had to watch it with one of our coaches. So I didn't have as much time to just tag constantly uh, sure. while our coach was watching the shots while he was writing up the written scout. Um, but yeah, let me see. What else do I do? You mentioned before about sh sharing film with, with players. Did you do that much through the, with the Instat platform? Or did you like download the clips first and then share it with them that way? How did that work? Yeah, typically, typically what we do is um, we download all the clips from Instat. Mm -hmm. uh, we download their minutes, their makes, their pick and roll. Like, it, it depends on what the players ask for. The players ask for all sorts of things. I mean, we've had guys come in and say, give me, you know, all of my pick and roll shots this year. And, I mean, that there's just obscure things that don't necessarily get clipped in synergy that we can look at or just minutes for a certain game that's six, seven games ago which is perfectly sure. fine. So what we'll do is we will download all the clips from Instat and we upload it to our other site called TeamSynced, which allows us to monitor how much they've actually watched of this stuff. So that's why we upload all of it because gotcha. we can see, you know, how much are they watching? What parts are they watching? It's always funny when we watch their, uh, when we put the games up there and you can see the, they watch like this first minutes and then it breaks up and then they watch because they're only just watching their minutes. So we found it easier to just show them their actual minutes and put their actual minutes on there for them to watch instead of just putting the whole game in a lot, making them scroll through it because they can't watch it on a computer. They have to watch it on their phone through that website. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we really focus with Instat a lot on player development. Me personally, I've also used it for a ton for scouting just to try and get an idea of who the team is so that when I go in there and talk to our our assistant coach that I work with on scouts, I know what I'm talking about. And this is before I necessarily even watch any clips on Oklahoma State or Texas or whoever I'm scouting. I have an idea of who they are, what do they like to do, where are they going to get their shots from. You can look at pick and roll stuff. I haven't looked at pick and roll stuff as much. I probably should have. Um, but there's just so many options that I have to – I only have so much time in order to scout a team. Sometimes we're on a quick turnaround. So I only do so many different things. And, I mean, our pick-and-roll defense was rough this year, to say the least. Uh, people got into the paint. And I yeah. think if I look at opponents' field goals, yeah, people shot 49% in the paint, which is – it's bad. 
So that's that's something that, you know, I mean, you don't need to be a rocket science to know that we gave up a lot of points in the paint. Our coaches were well aware of that, but this just shows you how bad it was and where we can talk about. And then, I mean, maybe some point this summer, I'm going to have to look at this and see, like, how are people scoring? Are they just getting drives to the basket? Are they posting up? Are they getting offensive rebounds? Are they, there's so many different options that are in here. I and mean, I mean, you can just click right now and say, okay, post-ups. So only 102 post-ups. So chances are we're getting blown by because I don't think it was a lot of putbacks. Okay, 123. So about 200 putbacks and post-ups. So that leaves about 700 shots for everything else. Sure. So right then and there, we can, we'll have to look into that more and figure out, okay, who's getting blown by? Why do we give up 917 shots in a season in the paint and give up 450 makes? Maybe we don't have a shot blocker. Maybe, you know, we don't have help side defense. And these are all things that we can go in and tag tag out, like our like my makes and misses that I did for Derek. And now all of a sudden we have raw numbers and and we can make our inferences on what we need to do. Like maybe we need to send another helper in there. We, maybe we need to have better perimeter defense. Maybe we need to switch more. Maybe it's something to do with our pick and roll uh, that we're not doing. So... There's a lot of different options available to us. Absolutely, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, actually, can, can, would you mind go checking out the pick and roll page? Yeah, how, how, how do you guys scout pick and roll like coverages? So we had, we've had you know a recent development with our pick and roll page here on our defense type. We've kind of expanded the type of tags that we do for each each pick and roll. Yeah, so we you know we, we tag you know over coverage, under coverage, switch, but also now include you know doubling, hedging, you know ice coverage. What, what, what's the kind of philosophy with West Virginia with this type of uh, action? So I mean, typically our offense is not a pick and roll type of offense. We don't run as much as some sure. other teams would. So like if I was looking at, I'd look at Oak State instead of us because we don't run pick and roll as much as other teams do like 138 versus how many do we have 48 on the year um so if we look at that i mean this would be interesting to look at okay so you know team team a ton of teams run pick and roll so you know how do they do versus switching how do they do versus you know going over going under the screen so yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe I mean, they, they haven't seen a lot of under. What about ice? Right. This they, is a cool they, thing. I didn't know. You should have told me about this halfway through the year. <laughs> this, is, oh, this, this is recent. This is recent. So it's probably um, – ice hasn't been fully updated yet on the platform. But I, I could see how how uh, teams defending Oklahoma State might go over the screen, you know, cage handling the ball, right? They're, they don't. They just want to do what trail coverage, right? They just want to make sure that they're kind of corralling him versus going under. Gives him a lot of options, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought I thought people would have doubled them more on the screen. That's interesting that they did. They probably switched the time. Yeah. No, they went over, which makes sense. Which definitely makes sense. That they went over. But but you even have fake pick and roll here. That would have came in handy with Texas. They run a ton of ghost screens. Right. For Shaka. But interesting. Yeah, interesting stuff for sure. No, if. You tagged our own defense too, right? So if I went mm -hmm. to correct, how are we doing doubles? This year? Yeah, we didn't know what we were doing on pick and roll defense sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now you figured so it I'm out. I'm sure I can coach things that at one point or another this year. Right. Any easier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that's cool. Huh. But yeah, I mean, that's basically what we do in a nutshell. I know I cover a lot of stuff, just throw a lot out there. I know when I was sitting down, Deuce was asking me at one point this year about, you know, how does he stack up against other players around the Big 12 and other players yeah. around the country? Because, you know, he's trying to get an idea of where he is, where is his development at, you know, what are his prospects as a pro? So I did comparisons with someone like Mac McClung, who 
they're similar but not the same at the same time. I mean, right. They they had similar roles. That's a that's a better way to put it. So I'd like to I like to show him, you know, just his numbers side by side, with, you know, with someone like Mac, where, you know. Where's the field goal percentage? So he shoots about the same field goal percentage, but he shoots better three point wise. He probably rebounds it more. This is on average per game. And then what I also did with him was I showed him his play types versus someone like Mac McClung or someone like, I think his name is Zigorowski from uh, yeah. Creighton. Cre yeah. Yeah. And so I showed him what his most efficient play is and what his least efficient play was. And I mean, he had, a, he had a rough idea of what it was, but I don't think he actually knew the numbers of what he did and, you know, what did he run most often. Right. And, you know, we were talking about isolations and how many isolations he, he, should, he thinks he should get per game versus how many he's actually getting. And I don't think he quite knew that he gets, what's the average, about three per game. I think he probably wants more, but his idea of isolations and my idea of isolations are completely different. He was right. talking about off handoffs, off pick and rolls, off just regular isolations where I'm just talking like everybody clear the floor and let him go. So I thought three is about the right number for him for just clear the floor and let him go. But you know, you get three there per game plus another two on handoffs, that's five. Plus another two off the pick and roll, that's seven. So yeah, maybe you increase that number to 10, 12, but you know, I mean, at the same time you are still a sophomore. And then you compare that to someone like Mac McClung and how that rates out and where does he need to work on? I mean, you want isolations, but you're only shooting 0.75 points per possession on isolations, which if you want to do something like that more often, you probably need to do, you probably need to increase that to a one point possession at least. Um, something I found with him as well is that uh, he probably didn't shoot as efficiently in his quote unquote best shot. Um, I felt like if he had got to the basket a little bit more, his efficiency will go up or if he gets behind three. I know he loves the mid-range too, but going forward as a, as a pro, he has to be able to, unless he makes this shot at a wider, higher percentage, which if you had asked any Mountaineer fan, they'd probably say that his mid-range three is his, or mid-range jump shot is his best jump shot or his best shot to take. The numbers say otherwise, technically. Right. I mean, that's not saying that he shouldn't take that shot. I think that that gives him a different type of threat because – you know, if you only shoot threes, you only shoot layups. Three layups, I don't know why I did the wrong. But, uh, you know, people know that you're not going to pull it. So having that threat to pull it, but maybe maybe taking one more dribble and getting into this paint. Maybe taking a step back and shooting it back here. I had to look at his step backs to see if he shot a lot. So he was one for three on the year on step backs. Probably needed be a little bit better, but that's something you can work on with him in the off season and really focus on and and see that improvement. So that way, when he does make it to that next level, he'll be he'll be set and ready to go. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Would we, would you actually mind going to the compare tab? I, I want to see how he like stacks with and then, and then put in um, Zagorowski in there. Marcus, right? Yeah. First off, you have to know how to spell the name. Uh, that's, why I, that's why I put Marcus in. Yeah. <laughs> I knew then, it would eventually. And then let's let's adjust because I mean, basic box score stats is I think can be easy. Go to the go to the gear in the top right corner. Yeah, let's. Let, I want to see like yeah. Let's do like some play type stuff. See how they compare. Like free shooting combination. Yeah. Shooting Maybe get rid of the box score stuff. We're not even. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, whatever, whatever you think. And then click show advantages at the top left, if you don't mind. Interesting. I yeah. Think we're in math. I think we're in math. So. It looks like he kind of has the advantage in most areas. I. Yeah, but, I mean. But, but like you mentioned, yeah, I mean, like Zagorowski uh, is a little more efficient on ISO percentage, though. Like, if you go back down. You know, yeah. Right he might there. take he takes less ISO shots per game, but he's more way more efficient. Absolutely, and then another place that you know, seems yeah, kind of bad is pick and rolls. I mean, right. being a pick and roll player, you have to 
being a point guard or a guard, you have to be able to come off that pick and roll more efficiently than he does. And I mean, that's a big percentage that's needs to be improved. I mean, when you compare yourself to somebody else, you know, you're not the same player, not the same, whatever, but you still have to, you know, you get a, you get a benchmark of where a player should be and where someone else is and how you stack up against them. Mm -hmm. So that's something that he probably needs to work on along with his, uh, his isolation percentage, thirty-one percent, is probably not quite high enough when you compare it to other heavily ISO players around the league, especially in the Big Twelve. For sure. Do you, do you do much comparisons? Like, can you click on one of the drop-down menus for average per game on the right side? Uh, yes. Which one do you want? Yeah, to click, you click on? on any of them. It doesn't matter really. Do you do yeah? Do you do any, any comparisons like per possession, like obviously per possession, but like per thirty six minutes or anything like that to try to even out to see if those those guys who come off the bench and don't have aren't high minutes guys, but they're very efficient. Does that help with comparisons for you guys too? Yeah, it can. I mean, I haven't done that as much again because there's just so much on here to to go through and to look at. I haven't done it as much, especially with Deuce because Deuce is a high minutes guy. But if we look at Average per 40 for all of them. I mean, it's still roughly the same. He averages about two pick and rolls shots made right. for four attempts. Um, I like totals a lot. Sure. Just to give you the raw numbers, like he's taken 62 shots versus Zagorowski's 97, but he's also made 47. So he's almost made more than Deuce has attempted. And again, that's more so our offense as opposed to. Right necessarily anything that deuce is doing i mean we throw it into the big and, and then we went down to one big so we went to a four out offense um so it changed things a little bit but yeah that's interesting uh tyler yeah the compare tyler yeah it's a really good tool for comparing like individual players you guys look at the um like so ncaa division one has like its own page where you can kind of see uh, how certain players like stack up in each conference? Do you guys do you guys look at that at all? Um, as far as like comparing, seeing like where Miles would stack up like in the Big Twelve? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely look at them, and uh, we have another site that we use that set like that shows you like who are they most similar to offensively? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, um, so we, we've looked at some of those types of things, and that's more so just just myself and Ryan and everybody else in my office as opposed to taking it to the coaches and seeing where they stack up and all that just because with analytics and numbers we have to really not throw too much at them at once because we are an older school staff which is perfectly fine we have our own ways and I give them numbers that support what they're thinking and seeing and how we do that but at the same time we still want to you know not throw too much at them at once just because there's just so much out there and so many different things that I want to, my first thing that I focus on is, okay, what's going to help us win? Mm -hmm. And so comparing Deuce to, you know, someone like Davion Mitchell or Mac McClung or Coleman, those are, it's good to see. It's good for Deuce to look at and compare to. It's good for us to get an idea of, you know, who he is, what, what he does, how does he stack up against other great guards in our league? but it's not necessarily something our coaches need to focus on or worry about when they're trying to focus on winning actual games. So that, that's why I really try and narrow down what I look at when it comes to instead, because there is just so much out there for me to look at, for me to analyze, for me to watch. I feel like I've only scratched the surface. I mean, I've only had it for one full year this season. So there's a lot I'm probably missing on this website that could help us. Um, but what I feel, I feel like what we've gotten so far is very good for us and has been very helpful for us uh, and really helped us analyze who we are as a team and where we are and where we plan on making adjustments and changes going forward. So. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, Tyler. I think uh, the INSAT platform is designed and, and presented in a way where um, – there's a lot of very simple video and, and, and stats available for someone who wants just that. Um, but then, like you said, there's a lot of layers to it where if you wanted to do deep dives in certain areas, whether it's uh, using 
stats or, or data to help inform decision making or um, if you're looking to um, we can even go into our video editor and show how you can use the platform from a you know drawing and, and uh, x's and o's standpoint as well so i think to have that balance between you know simple easy uh, to present information um, but also to be able to go a little more in depth and be comfortable in both sides of it i think it's beneficial for, for us and then our clients no absolutely and i, and I think no, absolutely. this will come in handy is a through transfers because you know you can get a feeling of who does the transfer compare to most on your team or most around your conference that you need and that you're looking for or past players that you have i mean if we're looking for a shop blocker right now then you know are we going to compare him to someone like sags who was an elite level shot blocker and how does he stack up and can we throw him the ball and it's more than just necessarily sh like the raw shot block numbers like yeah raw shot block numbers are good but it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story with someone who you know maybe he didn't get as much minutes because he was behind somebody like if you look at someone like Castleton from Florida he was behind some bigger players and he goes to Florida and he's still a great player but he didn't get those minutes at Michigan that he probably could have if he went somewhere else, which clearly showed, then he's a talented player. So that's where up for 40 could come in or deep dives into players and mm -hmm. the progressions over the years helps them show their player development. I mean, this is something I probably should need to go over with Deuce and show him, you know, where, where are you stacking up? Where, who do you think you're like? And here's all the players and here's where they get their competitive advantage over you and where their numbers are higher and where you probably need to, to work on. And, and then we could break down his video. So, okay, his pick and roll handling percentage is not the highest. Why? Maybe he's not coming far enough off the screen. Maybe he's not turning the corner enough. Maybe he's not creating enough space between him and his defender. Maybe our screeners aren't setting the right screen. Maybe they're not hitting the, his defender. These are all possibilities. And until we, you know, actually click on the numbers and look at the video and show him the video, he can't understand and can't practice it because he could just look at it and say, okay, I only shoot 37%. I'm going to practice shooting coming off a of ball hand, uh, off a screen all summer long. But if we don't know the actual reason why his number is so low, it's hard for him to necessarily get better without him just doing generic things. This will allow us to target his, his player development more so that we could see a faster improvement and an a easier adjustment for him as opposed to just getting reps in because just getting reps isn't always the answer. Um, not unless it's like a catch and shoot. That, that's probably the only reason. But even then, maybe, you know, you're off balance. Maybe you're not shot ready. Maybe you're fading. Maybe you're – there's so many different options that it, this will allow you to look at it and analyze the film and break it down with guys that I think guys for the most part want. Sometimes you have to sort of chase them into here to watch film with you and – and analyze something, but if you already have it done, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can send playlists to people, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we can have. kind of show that right now if you want. Let me see if I have a playlist. Yeah, as far I as you guys, what you do right now, as far as um, like sharing and presenting film to, to coaches, what does that kind of look like for you guys? Um, I mean, honestly, when it comes to film, I download all the clips and just put it on the computer just to let them watch it at their uh, leisure. Um, mm -hmm. If we're all in a group, I just pull it up on Instat, um, wherever it is. So say they want all of our, you know, makes from this corner or whatever. Like, I think Coach Harrison just told me that we're going to sit down with all of our guys and go over their shot charts, I think, next week, whenever he gets back. And we're going to talk to them, okay? You need to prove here. You need to be better here. This number has to go up. But anyway, so I'll just, you know, pull it up and, and let it run on the TV for them to watch. And if they want something different, you know, pull up something different. Um, but, yeah, going back to our playlist, I just created a little dribble moves playlist that, you know, one of our guys asked to look at certain players. I think, I think right now they're all NBA players. Um, so just to look at them and, you know, see what they like and see what they do and look at, get ideas and get different moves that they want to practice or they should look at doing and, I'm not saying all of a sudden they're going to become, you know, Damian Lillard out here. Mm -hmm. That's, that'd be nice. It'd be always <laughs> nice to get Damian Lillard on your team. But, uh, I mean, these are just ideas of little things that they could be doing or they could add to their game in this offseason that maybe they haven't thought about yet. For sure. 
Absolutely, and I think this like this playlist section right here, I think, can be really easy to use for people. So like, if you just kind of hover over it and click that um, that share button, kind of to the right of uh, the name of <laughs> yeah, right there. Yep, exactly. Then you can just you can send the clips to players, and it it takes them to the to the platform to watch the clips. Okay. Uh, okay. But you can also allow them to, you know, save this playlist to their own profile. You know, all, all players on our platform get free access. You know, we don't charge for any, you know, player access. So they can watch their own clips themselves, but then you as a, as a coach or, uh, can send them clips and they can watch it and edit it themselves. They can, you know, save separate clips that they like them themselves and then watch later. Um, so I think mean, that's a great part of our platform for sure. Oh, that is, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, we, we pro again, we probably need to do more. I mean, it's, it's tough because I am the only one who right. looks at it at a consistent level. Um, so I can only tag so much. I can only make so many playlists. Yeah. I can only, I can only do so much with all the other stuff that I have to do, which. Right. Hey, yeah, you, guys, you guys have a great workflow. It's a thing to get managers to do. Tag yeah. things make playlists yeah. and send them out to people that we're looking for. So. For sure. Well, um, if there are any other questions out in the crowd, um, feel free to unmute yourself. But, um, you know, other than that, you know, Tyler, really, really appreciate your time today. Um, really interesting stuff. I've, I've always enjoyed our talks about this stuff. So, yeah, really appreciate it. I, I mean, I, I love it instead, and I'm I'm excited to see all the stuff that you guys keep adding. I mean, like I said, I didn't know anything about your pick and roll defense, which is which is something to look at because I mean, I've been a task to look at different pick and roll defenses and mm -hmm. who's the best, and give examples of that, and create like a a pick and roll highlight tape, a pick and roll defense highlight tape, and it, it can be a struggle sometimes to watch thousands and thousands of pick and rolls and see how they're guarding it and who's guarding it the best. And I mean, this will just allow me to, to analyze certain things that I'm looking for, like who does switching the best, who does under or over the best. So that's interesting. That's going to make my, that's going to make my life a lot easier. So. You know what? I might put that on t-shirt there and sell that <laughs> Instat t-shirt with the quote. Instat makes my life easier. So thanks for that, Tyler. Yeah. I want some royalties though. Yeah. yeah you'll get, you'll get some proceeds. <laughs> you'll get some, you'll get some uh, piece of that. Well, thanks again, Tyler. I really appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you.